If you're a league player, I'm sure you've had the discussion many times with your friends or colleagues where they say, hey man, why do you play that game? It's so toxic. Everyone is such an asshole. Why do you waste your time with that toxic game? And you know, you're left sitting there being like, yeah, I guess you're right. It is kind of toxic, but I kind of still have fun and or, or I find it quite enjoyable regardless of the toxicity. And so, you know, oftentimes we, we never really engage in a nuanced discussion about what makes league a toxic game, what, what elements of league incise toxicity, and I guess, why do we play league despite all of the toxicity? So I guess this video today is going to be a bit of a comprehensive overview of why this is the case and go a little bit more in depth, talking about things I've never really seen anywhere um, on YouTube or among other content creators. So first things first, where I want to start is what even is League of Legends? Because even though this is a basic question, not many people can even answer this question. League of Legends by design is a brutal snowball oriented, fast paced strategy game. Meaning decision one in the game, which you come out the gates level one, you're late out of base. That one decision is going to impact the next 10 seconds. And that's going to impact the next 30 seconds. And that's going to impact the next five minutes. Every little decision you make has a flow and effect for the rest of the game. So if you're late out of base and the enemy invade your, your red buff and your jungle dies in your red, you're going to have to live with the consequences of that action for the entirety of the game. Maybe you just FF for 15 minutes, whereby it's the, the next 14 minutes, or or maybe it's a 35 minute slugfest, whereby, yeah, sure, you might lose the game at the end, maybe missing Baron Smite, whatever. But the reason the game was fundamentally in that position was that decision you made at second one or 10 seconds when you went out of base late and you didn't five point and defend your jungle. And this is a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people because fundamentally, if you don't understand this, if you don't wrap your head around this, then you can't really adopt, you're not going to be able to adopt the appropriate mindset. Like let's say, for example, you come from a background of Call of Duty or PUBG or, or any other game or even a single player game for that matter, where you can just save game, reload, and if you fail a level, it's okay, like Baldur's Gate, and you just start again. We don't have that luxury in League of Legends. You, you're stuck in that game until you either win or lose. And so I think a lot of people get angry over League of Legends because they come in expecting a very casual, relaxed gaming experience. Because to be honest, that's kind of what they've been marketed as. You know, I think Riot, and I'm going to be critical of Riot for a second, I don't think they appropriately market what the game or the messaging around, the communication around what the game of League of Legends actually is. I don't think they do a very good job of that. And for a good reason, I think that if they if they said warning, very complex game, uh, very brutal, snowball oriented, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people probably wouldn't have played it. It probably wouldn't have gained or garnered the popularity that it actually had. But I feel as though we're in a time where even though it's been around for you know, 14, 15 years, whatever the hell it is, still, this is still not very well understood by the wide variety of the league community or even the gaming community at large. And so I think that in order to even have this discussion, we need to all get aligned on what League of Legends is. Now, one of the main reasons I believe League does incite quite a lot of toxicity is because by design, it makes it hard to truly recognize correct or even great decision making. Now, the reason for this is because for every correct decision you make in a game, it only takes one thing for, for it to overshadow past positive experiences, right? Or made feel negligible in combination with the snowball oriented aspect of League makes it very difficult to pinpoint what we even did well. When you think about a lot of other games, you can clearly identify, despite making a mistake, all of the other things you did well. And even if you make that one mistake, it's not really gonna make too much of an impact on what happened up until that point, right? It's like, oh, yep, I messed this combo. That's okay. I'm all, I'm still, I did really well up until this point. I'm okay. But in League, boom, you can give a bounty and your entire game flips on its head, despite you playing maybe the first 15 minutes of that game spectacularly. And this is, I think, again, one of those really tough pills to swallow for people in League of Legends is they play well, they make all these great decisions and they're, you know, they're, they're doing a really good job, but then boom, they make that one mistake. And then now they're unable to see all of the good things that they did in the past, which, which I guess really complicates the learning journey. Now, remember, this also exists in many other sports, specifically poker. You can play the best game all night. You can be killing it. You can have a read on everyone. You can be taking everyone's money. But all it takes is one miss, one wrong call, and you can lose your entire stack. How many times? I mean, for those of you watching who have played poker, I'm sure they've been in a similar situation where they're killing it. They've got a you know a great big stack. They're they're taking everyone's money, and then someone goes all in, and they thought they had a read on that person. You do the wrong read. You you, you know you you can just cut your stack in half. So it doesn't matter how good you played up until that point in the night. 
you can basically undo all of your work or the majority of your work in one decision. And again, that is, uh, I think, one of the main reasons that um, lead can incite toxicity in many people. So rather than talking about it, let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this particular concept. Now, in this game here, I was playing Ari and absolutely killing it, 7-0, and Ari having a very good game. Then what happens, I get a bit complacent. I lose my focus. I was directing too much attention to what my team was doing on the other side of the map. Yone comes out of the bush and ends up killing me, chasing me down. I don't have my ultimate or my flash and end up dying and losing a massive bounty. And I end up giving 700 gold over to the Yone. And this definitely had a significant impact on the way the remainder of this game played out because it was actually on me and Kha'Zix to really do the bulk of the work, especially given how fed the Nyla was. Now, I was lucky enough to continue to use my lead with the Kha'Zix to win this game, but very easily I could have lost the game off this one singular mistake. All it took is one or two, one or two bounties to completely change or flip the game on its head. Now, for the average player, right, if we were to draw this out on a timeline here, let's say this X, X you know, represents this 700 gold bounty, right? I might have done all of these positive things that have got me into this position. But if I lose this game, people are going to mentally anchor to this one major mistake, whereby they're going to, it's going to be very difficult for the average player to go back in the bottom and be like, oh yeah, I did this well, I did this well, I did this well. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. They're just going to look at the loss screen at the end of the day, look at the fact that they lost LP and then overly generalize to themselves that they played this game relatively poorly or completely overlook all of the positive things they did in this game because it's just mentally hard to make peace with that. Now, sure, as you get more experienced in your League of Legends journey and you understand what the game of League of Legends is, you can start to highlight, okay, these are the as aspects of the game I did well. This is, this is like the, maybe the few things that I didn't do as well. And you can kind of take those individual learnings, but that's easier said than done because it's highly emotional to lose a game like this where you're seven and no, make one mistake, that changes the, the entire game, boom, you're in an alternate reality. But again, this is the reality of League of Legends. This is one of the reasons why it's such a brutal and difficult game. One of the other reasons that League often incites toxicity is that we only have limited impact because it's a team game. It's a 5v5 game. We can only have so much impact in any given game. This means that we can make fundamental, fundamentally sound decisions and not really reap the rewards of it in that one game. This is why A, reps matter a lot, and B, losses don't really tell you the full picture. Oh, this is where people, this is one concept that people really, really, really struggle with. They can play really great League of Legends, but we tend to tunnel vision on our most recent games, and we tend to overread into small sample sizes. So let's say, let's take an average player who plays six games, two, three blocks over the course of two days, Okay. They can get a little bit unlucky. They can play great League of Legends and lose the majority of those games. So let's say over those six games, they go a whopping uh, two wins and four losses. Now, this is where panic starts to set in for a lot of people. They think, oh, I feel like I'm playing really well and I'm still losing. What's going on? Matchmaking this, teammates this, meta this, whatever. I get it. I totally I empathize. I resonate. I get it. But you've got to remember that this is a very small sample size of games. So if you're making great quality decisions and you believe and you can prove that you're you know, playing great League of Legends, if we were to then extrapolate this out or expand your sample size to let's say 30 games, there's a very, very high likelihood that you're gonna be able to redeem that and you're gonna be able to win more than you lose. And that's what really matters. This is why repetitions matter over the long run. And initial losses, short-term losses or any given loss doesn't really tell you the full picture unless the sample size is significant. And so this is one of the major things that really makes people lose their mind because we really want to figure out what's going wrong uh, in every single game. And we tend to, we, we try to kind of generalize too much from singular games. Now, this also happens in poker. Now, I know I'm referring to poker a lot, but I think it's a really great comparison. One of the, the major things that we see in poker that mirrors this is the bad beat. Now, for people who are unfamiliar with what the, a bad beat is, Essentially, what it means is that you can have player A who's playing great poker. So let's draw it out here. Let's say player A is making playing great poker. They had a read on the opposition and they have a, let's say, a 98% chance of winning a given hand. Player B gets outplayed and they have a 2% chance of like drawing the right card and winning. But because there is, you know, the you know, the player only has a limited impact over the game and there is an element of luck in 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 poker, this player B can magically draw that that card, you know, maybe 2% chance, and they draw it and they win. 
And this is where this is what we call a bad beat, where player A typically made the, the great decision and had a read on the opposition, whatever, and should theoretically statistically win that hand, but ended up losing just because of things out of their control. And, and this is where, you know, tilt really comes into play. Tilt is a, a term that is commonly used in poker. It didn't originate in poker. It actually originated in pinball, I believe. But um, yeah, tilt is thrown around in, in the poker world quite a lot for this very reason. It's a very mental oriented game. And let's say player A, let's go back here and draw this out. Let's say player A then um, anchors mentally on that, that particular hand and loses a bunch of money and they, they, they can't let go from that event. They're going to self-sabotage and, and and essentially play worse on future hands, which then impacts their level of, uh, level of play moving forward, which is, can actually um, you know completely warp their entire view or the perspective of how good they are at the at the game. And so this leads to a whole host of problems, what I kind of call stage four oriented problems, and it can really start a very toxic cycle. So this is one of the major contributing factors as to what incites toxicity in League of Legends. Now, the way you counter this is by understanding that this is a thing, by respecting that you, you are only going to have a limited impact over the game. You're not going to win every single game. If you come in expecting that you're going to dominate everyone, you're going to carry every game, you're going to have this 85% win rate, you're in la-la land. You're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Most people are only going to climb with a 55 to 60% win rate, and that is the tough pill you need to swallow. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of what this may look like in one of your given games. So in this example here, this was from one of my Ari clients. I believe this is Master TNN NNA. And they were 4-0 and doing a really good job. And they didn't want, uh, the Ari didn't want this fight. He was trying to ping back and communicate and do everything so she could, you know, influence the body language and pings to ping a team back. But the team went too far. Ari knew this. This Ari knew that the fight was not going to go well because the enemy could collapse, and then the entire team ends up getting chased down um, and essentially getting aced. And then I think the enemy end up getting Baron off this, and it turns into an absolute disaster, and the game kind of implodes. And so this is an example where, in this case, the Ari knew exactly what to do. They tried to ping back. They tried to take control of the situation. They tried to take accountability and responsibility. But because they only have so much impact over the game, they can't control all the other players in on their team. There's only so much they can do. Now, you know, the ideal mindset we would have in this scenario is, okay, what, what is everything that we can do? What, we need to exhaust all the options in terms of how we contributed to the situation. Could we have maybe charmed better? Could we have pinged well in advance? Are there other things we could have done? Now, sometimes the answer to that question is no. Sometimes it is simply out of your control. And this is where people begin to lose their minds. They say to themselves, well, I'm 4-0. Oh. My teammates are, are monkeys. What the hell's going on here? Like, how do I climb? But again, this is a tying into, yes, you are going to get unlucky. Things that happen, things are going to happen that are simply out of your control. But if you choose to focus on these things out of your control, you're going to lose your mind very quickly. You're going to enter that self-sabotaging cycle. You're going to you know, fall for that trap. And then you're going to really start to lose games that you should theoretically win. And so you're going to self-sabotage games that theoretically will auto wins. You're going to turn auto wins into auto losses because of yourself. So this is a great example of what having limited impact over the game, one of the ways it can manifest in your solo queue games. One of the biggest or largest contributing factors to toxicity in League of Legends is the lack of respect of the mental stack, because this has a flow and effect that leads players to rush into critiquing others. You have to remember guys, League isn't very difficult strategically. I would own up to that. I think uh, uh, that Warcraft content creator Grubby said that, you know, League's not really that difficult. And I would agree on half of it, right? I don't think League is actually that over, overly complicated strategically, right? The map is relatively small. It's not that hard to know what to do next for the most part. What makes League difficult is the execution of everything, the execution of the fundamentals, the execution of the champion, gathering all of that information and coming to that conclusion with all the shit going on around you. That's what makes, makes League very difficult. But if you don't understand this, you're going to rush to critique other people. What may seem like a very basic mistake to one person can actually be an extremely complicated scenario to someone else. I'm going to paint a picture for you. Let's say, for example, there's a mid laner there trading with someone in lane, right? Let's say we have, you know, this player here, they're going, they're, playing, they're, they're trading in lane. And a jungler walks over a ward that they placed there on the ledge, point blank, and then they, they go ahead and die to that gank. Now, this person's jungler is going to start question marking him with a, how the hell do you die to that gank? I pinged it. They showed on the ward. You were leaning. You were doing everything, but you still don't. How do you get to this rank? This is where the toxicity starts to come out, right? But if you would actually get very specific, you, if you would actually look at the game through their POV, you look at what was going on in that particular moment where the jungler was showing on the ward, 
they might have actually been looking for timing a trade with the last hit on a cannon. They might have, the enemy might have engaged them and done a heavy trade where they had to react and all of their mental sack was occupied with the 1v1. So, you know, in that particular moment, it would be borderline impossible for them to be simultaneously aware of the jungler moving over that ward for one and a half seconds while also undergoing that particular trade. And so objectively, that person may have been actually keeping their eyes directed on the minimap before that trade and directly after, but for that 1.5, one and a half or two seconds where that thing was going on, they couldn't have looked at the minimap. And that might have actually just been when the jungler moved over. Maybe the enemy jungler just got a little bit lucky there. But if you're the if you're the this teammate's jungler, they're getting flamed. Maybe other people are question mapping in them. Maybe it was a top lane roam. Whatever the hell it might be, you see this all the time. And this is why me. This is actually one of the things that really prevented me or helped me deal with toxicity personally is that I understand that no matter how basic a mistake looks, there is always a reason for this to be the case. And this is a very very healthy outlook on the game. It's something that completely. I would say did a complete 180 on my relationship with the game. This is something that people very, very rarely understand. And it's not until you get, it's not until you really understand what league is about and understand why league is hard that you can actually start to call yourself out on this sort of thing. Now, an interesting observation that is worth noting is that if we are hypercritical of others for, for making what we deem these basic mistakes, what does that mean for us and our relationship with our own level of play? Like what happens when we make a basic mistake? And this is where that vicious cycle of tox toxicity often starts because it starts by critiquing others. Oh yeah, my, my teammate did that, my teammate did this, blah, 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 blah. But then when it comes to when we make that mistake, it's like, should we be critical to ourselves? And typically that we are typically, like, oh my God, I'm such an idiot. How did I make that mistake? Oh my God. And then that we lower our self-confidence and then we play worse and they can start that downward spiral of, wow, I'm playing with lowered confidence. I'm actually, I am, you know, a piece of shit. I'm not going anywhere. And then it really gets out of control. So by being critical of others via not really understanding, respecting the difficulty of the game through the mental stack, you're inherently going to eventually become more toxic towards yourself. So this is why I, I always say we've got to be empathic to ourselves, empathic to others, because it's going to have a positive upflow effect onto being kinder to ourselves when we make mistakes and understand that, yeah, even though this was a little bit basic, it wasn't basic, even though strategically it's basic, the execution is a complete different ball game. And lastly here, most people forget about the trickle down effects on our own self image and self confidence when flaming and criticizing others, which is kind of what I was mentioning before. Another interesting observation is that due to most players viewing the game through a very particular lens, a very narrow lens, you can often make the correct decision, but others will flame you for it because they just don't understand the game through your lens. And this often leads to people second guessing the quality of the decisions that they're making. I remember I got sent this clip from Whippo. I really, I couldn't find it. I tried to find it, but basically on stream, he said something like, if everyone played more champions and more roles, the game would be less toxic because they would be able to understand the game through their lens. It's like, you know, when you see like a Darius go like 0-7 on top side, it's like, and then you look at why they went 0-7. If they were a Darius player or they understood top line a little bit more, they would understand that, oh yeah, their jungler traded them off. They got counterpicked and dropped by a vein. They, um, the, the jungler like three camped them top side or blah, 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 whatever the hell happened. And it's like, it's like, I'm not, we're not condoning that, but we're like, okay, that, that kind of makes sense. It's not like this guy is just an idiot. It's not like this guy just randomly did that. We'd be more naturally empathic of other people because we'd be able to view the game through other people's lenses. And this is also why I believe like the longer you play the game and the more expanded your League of Legends worldview becomes, more you kind of naturally adopt a more empathic worldview. And this has kind of been the case for me, especially um, having coaching so many people and seeing the game through so many different lenses. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So this was me playing Victor, and this game happened a while ago, and I remember I died to an early Kha'Zix gank, and the Kha'Zix started snowballing. So I was not off to the right start, I was behind in tempo, and I wasn't doing overly well into this smolder. So the game ended up going quite poorly, and there was this instance where I was behind in tempo on this smolder. So I was moving back to lane, I saw that the Alistair was on a bit of a roam window, and I knew that the enemy Kha'Zix was really, really strong. So my mindset right now is Victor, if I'm behind in farm and I'm not doing a great job, I need to really stabilize and get to some of my key spikes. And so what happened, if we freeze frame right now, I knew Alistair was on a roam, right, on top side. I knew that the Kha'Zix was in the area who was like 3-0 and at this stage. I knew that my Skarn was Oom on top side struggling into the Darius, and I saw my Zac was really low. So the hypothesis that I made in this in this moment was, okay, Smolder's moving. There's nothing I can do about that. That player's 
highly, highly, highly likely not going to end out too well for my team. So I decided to be in danger, 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 and not bother moving. That was the hypothesis that I made in the heat in the moment. I didn't even bother painting my camera because I was so confident that the play wouldn't work out well. For whatever reason, um, the Kha'Zix overextended, shit happened, and they end up getting a nice little kill. Now, I've already committed to mid. I can't now run roam top. The play is going to be long over from now. And to be honest, the Smolder is actually making a pretty big mistake, losing a lot of farm on top side. Now, as you'll see here in a moment, I start getting question mark pinged by my support saying, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you still mid? Why are you not moving? Now, again, I can understand why Pike wouldn't really see my perspective. But if you actually break it down, if this person were to look in the actual post-game review and look at how I came to this conclusion, you would argue that, to be honest, this decision for Victor to stay mid is, is a, a completely sound decision. And because I made this decision, you know, now I end up getting myself into a really, really good position. Smolder ends up getting further and further behind. And this actually got me really back into the game. And look, sure, maybe, maybe if the Victor, you know, in an alternate reality, I panned my camera early and I saw it was going okay, maybe I could maybe see a world in which I run top. But to be honest, I think nine times out of 10, moving top would be a, a, based off the variables that I had at the time, Alistair on the move, the Fed Kha'Zix, Smolder having tempo, I'm already behind, blah, 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 blah. It makes perfect sense for me not to move and stay mid and, and really try to get to my key spikes, right? Especially since Smolder roaming at this stage of the game is typically, again, um, this is a huge opportunity for me to get back into my lane, right? And so me getting flamed by Pike, I understand. I know, I know exactly why I made this decision. But if you were maybe a less experienced player and this person's getting question mark ping, this victor's going to start to then second guess the decision. They're going to think, oh, maybe I made the wrong decision, even though the decision they made was completely sound. And so this is where, again, people start to get confused. They, they start to get a little bit more toxic because people have failed to view the game through other people's lens. Now, if this Pike had more mid lane experience or was a more experienced player in general, like Bipo had mentioned, Maybe he wouldn't bother spam, you know, spam picking other people. Maybe he wouldn't have bothered flaming other people because he would be able to kind of somewhat empathize and understand the game through Victor's lens. And this is something that I've noticed. I find it to be a bit of an interesting observation. I wouldn't say this is a huge one relative to the other concepts we've covered so far, but definitely worth noting. Now, an important part of this toxicity conversation is the whole aspect of this elitist or elitism section of the high low community, where quite often you tune, in, tune into a streamer or some YouTube content creator, and they'll be talking about how Diamond and Master tier players are shit, and they should get out of their games, and they don't know what they're doing. And I think an important question to ask is, how does this affect the wider community? Well, in my opinion, this makes 98% of the player base feel shitty about their own rank and themselves, but also perpetuates this elitist talking down culture since it's all relative, right? Whether you are an Emerald player talking down on a Platinum player or a Diamond player talking down on Emerald players, vice versa, it's all the same thing because it's all relative. It's very easy to put someone down. It's harder to be empathic and understanding and encouraging. Right now, it's important to note that whether or not these high low streamers or whatever are aware of it, they are kind of role models inside the community because they are the best of the best or at, or at minimum, even if they're not role models, they at least have a significant amount of influence. And so when you're when you're seeing, you know, some of the most popular content creators in the game talking like this about Diamond and Master tier players, this is going to have an effect or in some way, shape or form condone certain levels of toxicity, which you know, is a bit of a shame. Now to take this further, you may ask, well, why does this elitist culture exist in the first place? Like, why is it even around? Why is it a thing? Well, this is something that I haven't been, haven't seen spoken about anywhere on YouTube. And I think it's really, really important to cover. So there is this inherent failure to respect the skills that these high level players have actually developed due to them simply viewing it as a game, right? If you, let's just take, let's just use a bit of a case study here. Let's take the example of Peck and Wolf, right? An amazing player, played the game since like season one, over a decade, tens of thousands of hours, absolutely loves League of Legends, continues to spam games every single day, really, really high level of intuition, great player to watch, right? When you look at the things that he does, he, he seamlessly picking up new champions, playing like a champion ocean to a high level, doing all this crazy shit. He's, he doesn't even really have a great understanding of how good he really is at the game. And when prompted, you say, well, what, hey, man, what did you do to get so good? And what, what was your training regimen? And what was your process? He's going to say, I don't know, man. I just I just played a lot of the game. I love the game and I've played for so long. He didn't really, he didn't really, he kind of stumbled into being as good as he is because he just played the game for tens of thousands of hours over an incredibly long period of time. He wouldn't even view 
what he has as even kind of like a, a pretty crazy skill set. It's like, well, I'm just, yeah, I'm just good at a game that I love. When you compare this conversation, if asked this question to maybe someone who plays high level traditional sport, whether it be someone like an NFL athlete or a tennis professional tennis player, they're going to say, well, yeah, I trained my butt off, man. I, I got coaching when I was like five years old and my dad was a tennis player and I had to make all these sacrifices to train after school. And, you know, even though I love the game, I knew that I had to do all these things to take my gameplay to the next level. And because it was so difficult to get to that point and they understood the difficulty of that skill and that that skill, even from an outside perspective, has a lot of respect from the wider community. When, when prompted, um, you know, th they're going to be a lot less toxic to people below them or, or they're not going to be as willing to put other people down because they understand just how hard it was to get to where they were. There is this inherent respect for the actual training or the actual process to becoming a high level athlete in that given sport, in that given field, right? Whereas in league, there isn't. There's a lot of people that kind of stumbled their way to high elo, or not stumble, I wouldn't say that's the right word. They trained, but they trained in a way that they're not even aware of it as training. They're just literally playing a game that they love after school, after university, after work, whatever the hell it might be, for tens of thousands of hours, and they've stumbled their way kind of into a high level of play, having developed amazing skills of the game. They couldn't, they probably couldn't even articulate what they do super, super, super well that allows them to be so consistent at a high level because it's just a game to them. It's just a game to them. And this is crazy. The only reason this is the case is because league and esports in general is still in its infancy stage. League specifically, what's well, been around for like 14 years. There is just not, it's so, we're still at such low levels of the game. It's still incredibly immature. Now we, we might look back, you know, in, in 15, if the game is around for another 15, 20 years, you know, the new up and coming players who are actually getting coached from a young age and there's a lot of sophisticated coaching and to get to Challenger nowadays is a lot harder than it used to get to be to get to Challenger. Like it will change over time, but it's going to take a lot of time to get there. And so I think this is one of the main contributing reasons why there is this elitist culture because there's that lack of respect. Now, there is another layer here, and this is where things get a little bit messy. I apologize if it gets a bit messy here. There is, I've seen what I've noticed, this insecurity stemming from associating self-worth to in-game performance. If you break down the path a lot of these people took to get to this point, whether it be Master Plus, it usually required sacrifice whether they were aware of it or not. Meaning being good at League of Legends is one of their big defining qualities. Maybe they're not the most sociable. They've sacri made sac sacrifices in their social life. Maybe they, they didn't finish that uni degree because they were wanting to, to be a, a full-time streamer. Maybe they don't have cl super close relationships with their family members. Maybe they don't go out all the time or they're not, they're not super physically fit or whatever the, whatever the sacrifice was, whether or not they're aware of it. Because they've made all these decisions and they've all in on League of Legends, being good at League of Legends is a very big part of their identity, what they perceive as one of their massive traits as an individual, right? Again, if, if prompted. And so if this person were to play poorly or people were to play poorly in their games, there can be this sense of like, um, if they're losing LP, there is a, it's not even just a loss of LP for them. It's like a loss of like, it's like taking a chunk of their self-worth because losing or being bad at League of Legends means well, I'm just not a good, I'm just not a high level individual anymore. This is such a big part of who I am and I'm performing bad on the riff that holy shit, like, oh man, what does that mean? What does that say about myself? So I think there is this, there is an element of like insecurity there for not everyone. I'm not, and again, I'm, I'm generalizing a little bit here, but I have noticed that this can, this can cause a lot of external toxicity towards others because they're projecting that insecurity onto other people. This one's a little bit more complicated. I don't want to go too deep on that, but it is something I've noticed. And so when these negative events occur in game, like I was mentioning before, especially if others make the mistake that reduced the likelihood of winning a game that was really important to them, in their mind, winning or losing is not just about that LP. It's subconsciously about how much value they have as an individual, especially some of these high level streamers. And last thing, and, and people don't really talk about this much, it is also just naturally a highly competitive environment. If you're at the highest levels of any sport, I went to a local basketball competition, high level basketball competition, and there was a shit ton of toxicity, people hurling abuse at each other. There was all this crazy shit going on, people getting other people's faces. And you see this in other traditional sports, but it's just manifested in a different way because in traditional sports, you have a way to kind of externalize it immediately. And there is no anonymity. So it's just like here and now, I'm looking at you in the eyes, 
there is that, I guess, aggression or whatever the hell you want to call it. But in Lee, because it's anonymity, we're on the internet, you know, you're on a computer screen on the other side of the country, whatever, the, the toxicity manifests in a slightly different way. And we kind of, we kind of forget that toxicity is around in other sports. It's just not as, I would say it's not really labeled as toxicity. It's just labeled as aggression or it's just labeled as passion or it's just labeled as being competitive. So if you go, if anyone watching this has played high level sport, you would know exactly what I mean. Now we've been talking a lot about why league is so toxic and all these negative aspects. I want to flip it on its head for a second. And my argument here is that I believe the league community at large is quite often quite naive and unaware of why they even find league fun in the first place. And for nearly every toxicity inducing aspect of the game, there is kind of a reason why it exists in the first place and can, and it probably is there to lead to a more pleasurable gaming experience. Now, not for every single one, but I'm going to give you a list of a few, which might change your relationship with some of these aspects. So the first one here is the snowball oriented nature of League of Legends. Now it's great if you're behind, I'm sorry, it's great if you're ahead, sorry, because if you're ahead, let's say you, you play your early lane really well, you manage your way as well, you set up a gank, you get snowballing, you're two and oh, you're, you're, you're dominating your opponent now, the enemy can't play the lane at all. It feels great. You feel satisfied knowing that you're rewarded for making fundamentally sound decisions. Now on that side of the coin, it's great. But if you're the other one on the other side of the coin, who's getting snowballed on, and now you're that zero four Darius top, who's getting dove on repeat, it feels quite shit, doesn't it? So it depends on whatever lens you look at it from. But again, the fact that this concept exists, it, it, I believe is a net positive because it keeps you engaged with the game. So this is what I said here, it forces you to stay focused and engaged. If league wasn't snowball oriented, let's just pose an alternate reality where it wasn't that brutal. Well, what would happen, right? You would you'd be more inclined to check out. You'd be more inclined to be alt having in the lull stage. You'd be more inclined to be, oh, it doesn't matter if I mess up that wave. Eh, what's the point of even trying to kill this guy? He's just going to come back and I'm not really going to, it's not going to matter that much. It wouldn't feel like a very captivating or immersive game. It would just be another one of those casual, boring games. You'd play a little bit with your friends for fun and you'd be moving on to the next game, right? It wouldn't be something that you'd want to take seriously. And, and when, when prompted, I asked a lot of people, why do you play league? They say, because of the immersion. It gives me this feeling of flow set and immersion that I haven't really been able to find with any other game. And I believe the snowball nature of League of Legends is one of the key reasons why this immersion can fundamentally exist. The second one is that we have only a limited impact over the game. Now, this is not so fun if you're trying to carry, right? If you're the one that's 5-0 and oh and you're trying to take over a game and because you've got you know four other teammates, you need to work with them and try to be strategic to win the game, right? It can be a little bit frustrating. But it makes sense if you're the one that's behind. Maybe you got a little bit, maybe you didn't get off to the right start. You're like 0-1 or 0-2. And maybe you're counterpicked in draft. But the fact that that person that you're versing only has limited impact, you can do things to limit their impact and then you can leverage the other people in your team that maybe are doing an okay job. So it forces you to actually think holistically about the game on both sides of the aisle. If you're behind, then it forces you to think holistically, okay, how can I leverage my teammates that aren't behind, or if I'm ahead, it forces you to think about, hmm, okay, who else is my secondary win condition? Who else can I play around with? So it really, I guess, adds this layer of complexity and strategic element that wouldn't otherwise exist if you could just get it super ahead and just run around the map killing everyone. So again, I would, I would argue to uh, look at the flip side of the coin if these concepts weren't to, or these, I guess, aspects of League of Legends weren't to exist. And the third one is League is complex with, you know, a wide variety of different combinations and there is an infinite amount of ways skirmishes can play out and, and that can feel very overwhelming. If you're maybe a less experienced player, this can often incite a lot of toxicity with people. They'll be, oh my God, this is a game. Do I just lose the game because I don't know this one thing? And the answer can be, yeah. But this is also um, a huge positive of League of Legends. Like the fact that it's a new and fresh game every single game. Because of this complexity, there's this a crazy amount of skill expression. There is a crazy amount of room for creativity. And this is what's exciting. This is why we can play the same map, the same champion for thousands and thousands of games and not really feel like the game is getting stale because there's so many combinations. No two league games are going to be the same. The list goes on. And I would urge you guys to go through many of these aspects of the game that maybe cause a little bit of toxicity for you and say, well, what would happen if this didn't exist? What would be the opposite? Would I still even enjoy the game? That's a question that I pose to you. Let me know what your reflections are on that one. So to end this video, what are some ways we can be more positive, not just for the sake of it, but to have a better time on the Rift and perform to our level? So number one, I've been very vocal about this one. 
get comfortable congratulating other people when they make a good play. Be very generous with our praise because this is not only going to make, you know, just give you a general, in general, more positive experience, but it's going to allow you to develop more confidence in your own level of play. Because when you make a good play, you can be like, oh yeah, you know what? That was great. I, I'm really proud of myself there. Me avoiding that gank, me, um, you know, mechanically executing that particular play, m me, you know, I guess executing on something that I've learned in the past. Get comfortable giving others praise. Give yourself a pat on the back when you do something you would never would have done in the past. A great example of this is that, let's say, for example, you've been working on how to say no to plays and your jungler comes in and you say, no, 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 you ping back and you tell them to go away. Give yourself a pat on the back. Like, again, tying into the first one, congratulate yourself. Be generous with that praise. Be, be very vocal and even overly, sometimes over, overdoing it can actually be a, a really, really positive thing in the journey, that, which I think pays dividends in the long run. And this has been a complete game changer for me. And I'll tell you, I'm going to say no bullshit, complete transparency here. I could never do this in the past because every mistake that I made, I, it was never them playing well. It was always me. I, oh, I played it poorly. That wasn't them doing it well. It was, it was just me. That wasn't a good gank. That was just me uh, not leaning properly or um, that, that wasn't me, um, you know, getting outplayed here. That was, that was me. I just played it poorly. They didn't really play it that well. And when you constantly, you know, frame it through this lens where the enemy played it, they didn't play it well. I just played it poorly. It's very difficult to gain self-confidence and, and every, everything just feels much more mentally taxing. You're just going to have to take my word for it. I promise you it is an absolute game changer and hold your tongue. No venting. Think of it like any other skill or muscle. You must train yourself whenever something negative happens rather than venting and being like, so you're going on Discord with your friend saying, oh my God, I got a dumbass jungler again, or my bot lane is always losing and oh, blah, blah, all this negative crap. If you frame it through the lens of, okay, I had a bit of a rough game. What happened? What did I contribute to this game? Um, what could I have done to maybe prevent my team from dying to that gank? Was there anything that I could have done here? Could I have pinged off that dragon? Could I have pinged my land of roaming? If we can prevent venting and replace it with constructive high level quality questions and taking maximum accountability, this is going to give you not only more fun, more pleasure, you're going to get more learning from your games. So you're going to have much more positive experience on the rift. And lastly here, appreciate and embrace the difficulty of the game, especially the mental stack aspect. Never forget that. So if you have any other questions about this video, guys, let me know. I'll be around the comment section. Good luck with your solo queue. Cheers.